So how about that for the Canadian story? Let's get to the downhill race. Now Scott Russell has the call alongside four-time Olympian Brian Stemmel. Thanks, Andy. In downhill ski racing, there are the classic events. As you know, Italy has Val Gardena and the Sasslong. The Lauberhorn in Wangen, Switzerland is majestic. Kitzbühel in Austria boasts the sinister Hanenkamm. Germany's jewel of Alpine is the Kandahar Classic downhill at Garmisch Partenkirchen. The beauty of a race in Bavaria brings out the best in the sport, the superstars of speed on the white circus. And it is a wonderful day in Garmisch Partenkirchen. It's a little bit warm, however. Dominic Paris of Italy is a perfect example, making his way back to prominence after devastating injury. Matthias Meyer is Austrian's Alpine ace for now, heir to a magnificent tradition. Beat Foyts of Switzerland is a big game performer, coming off back-to-back -back wins on the strife at Kitzbühel. There's a look at the recent roll of honor at Garmisch. Thomas Dressen of Germany cannot defend. He had hip surgery in November. He was a forerunner today. Five past champions, including Beat Voigt, will challenge for the Garmisch win in 2021. Max Frenz of Austria could be a contender. He was the fastest in the lone training run for this race. And Brian, it has been extremely warm in Bavaria. Yes, extremely warm, so much so that they only had one training run and they've actually had to move the start lower down. Only because of COVID reasons, they didn't find that uh, there was enough room up there to separate all the athletes, the coaches, the servicemen. So about 500 meters shorter today in Garmisch. Let's go racing with Austria's ace, Matthias Meyer, and take us down the Kandahar. Well, it's still 3,000 meters long, and you really get up to speed quickly. Look at that 10 seconds. He's going 126 kilometers an hour, so really fast off the Trogelhang at the start. And then through the Schussauger, pretty flat through this section, but you carry so much speed that one right foot turn right at the end of the Trogelhang is so important to carry your speed through this section of the course. Now you go through the Himmelreich, where the Super G starts. And the Himmelreich, known as Heaven. And a little further down, you get to Hell. But right now, you have to deal with more flat conditions. You can see the soft snow spraying up a little bit. More corn-like snow, spring conditions, but really, really fast snow. No friction on the skis whatsoever. Now the Ice Hang, always known as Super Icy in Garmisch, an aptly named for that over the Sprung, Not too big of a jump today. And then a really important turn right here. Big left foot turn, extremely fast, coming through the Ole, or Hell as they call it. The years passed when Podborski won one big sweeping long turn. Now they put a few more turns in it. When Pod won, they went straight down here. Now it's a turn to the left through the Fischmeise. And then a few gates to the finish. That's always a really difficult turn. You can really make up a lot of time in the last seven or eight seconds after the fish ties in. But 33 gates, 3,000 meters long, and a buck 34. That's pretty quick. Matthias Meyer, the 2014 Olympic downhill champion, has been on fire this season. A little bit faster than training, about half a second faster than the fastest in training run. That was his teammate, Max Franz, so model as they call him, his nickname, number one out of the gate. Everybody picked early numbers to go because of the soft conditions, and it'll get really bumpy, even though it is already. Bayat Foyts buckling up, getting ready to go. He's the World Cup downhill leader right now. Bryce Bennett, a big man, six foot seven from the United States. I really wish he'd take his starts a little bit more seriously. He's such a big guy, as you said. He could really blast out of the start with all sorts of power. And he, he, I think he pretends he's Bodie Miller, just a relaxed and cool guy in the start. He could really use those long levers to have his feet way behind him and his upper body almost at the first gate before his boots flick that wand open. But he's a guy who's been endlessly tinkering with his boots and equipment, those fishers, skis and boots haven't been working to the best of their abilities and been trying to figure things out over the last bunch of races. Bryce has struggled a little bit this season, uh, but dallied with the podium at the Sasslong at Val Gardena where he was fourth. The 
the salt at the hill so you can hear how icy it is underneath those skis. Put salt on it to try and firm it up and make it last throughout the race, but it will get more rough and more chewed up as every racer goes down trying to hit the same line, but it's hard in the same line where you're going this quick. Matthias Meyer, lightning quick out of the gate. First one down here in the Kandahar. Bennett chasing that and is well back. One eighty-three back. Bryce Bennett of the United States, not close today. He's still searching for answers and may not be just in his equipment. Christoph Innerhofer of Italy still to come, an effervescent character. He won here in 2013. That was his last victory on World Cup. <laughs> Bayat Foyts, you know all about him. Back to back wins finally at Kitzbühel and he's on a roll. Unsuccessfully tried to win the Han and Kam for 10 years and then won two races in a row. That probably made it even sweeter. All those years putting out full effort, not quite getting there. And what a weekend for Foyts. Look at him, the guy just searches for speed, knows how to go fast, got those hands right up in front of his face. Actually went home after kids feel to rest and spend some time with his family, his two and a half year old daughter, Clea. And I don't know how much he can get, rest he can get with a two and a half year old daughter, but seems to be working well for him right now. Won at Garmisch in 2018. This, by the way, is the final downhill before the speed racers head to the world championships in Cortina d'Ampezzo. Yeah, they only rate, race eight downhills this year. This is the sixth. They'll race the seventh in Kvitfell, which is still in question because of the COVID restrictions in Norway, and then the eighth in Lenzerheide in the final. So the downhillers trying to make their money here from the overall, and Foyt's three tenths up. Got to stay in that right foot through the Fischneise. Good looking line there. Down low, Foyt's into the tuck, coming home. Meyer has the lead and still does both. Man, Foyce takes over by three one hundred. Yeah, and a salute to Matthias Meyer. They've been rivals ever since, trading that leader bib back and forth in Kitzbühel. And it looks like Foyce will hang on to that leader bib right now. Look at that, into his tuck over the Seelbahn sprung before he lands. The Kugel Blitz is absolutely on a roll. Right down to the wire, and Bayat Foyts beats Meyer by three one hundredths. The Olympic Games, as we continue with the historic men's downhill in Germany on the eve of the World Championships. Alpine skiing made its debut at the 1936 Olympics in Garmisch-Partenkirchen. Two combined races, one for the men, one for the women. German skiers Franz Fener and Crystal Kranz, the first Olympic champion skiers from 26 nations, took part. The first World Cup downhill for men was held here in 1970. The first winner, the legendary Austrian Karl Schranz, a three-time world champion who won eight downhills on World Cup. Steve Podborski of Don Mills, Ontario, won three downhills in a row at Garmisch, 81, 82, and 84. This crazy Canuck won a total of eight times on the White Circus, his run at Garmisch almost without equal. With three victories, Podborski has more than anyone, with the exception of Switzerland's Roland Colomban, who won three straight in the 1970s. A bevy of skiers, including Austrian greats Franz Klammer and Stefan Eberhotter, have won twice at Garmisch. Out of the gate, Maxence Mousaton of France, a 30-year-old from La Plaine. He was the 2010 World Junior Champion in the Super G. Just a beautiful shot of the town as they leave the start in the background. And then the Zugspitz, the highest mountain in Germany and just a beautiful part of the country. And really, it's the fastest track, top to bottom. They had an average speed of 110 kilometers an hour 
on Thursday's training run. And Val Dezere, if you consider, is only 87 kilometers an hour. Val Gardena's 96 average. Bormio, an average of 100 kilometers an hour. And Kitzbühel, that we saw speeds of 149 that Travis Ganong went last week, it's only average 103. So this is the highest average speed, mostly because of the snow conditions, but also because it's just a relentless pitch. It's not super flat, it's not super steep, it's just relentless the whole way down. And even though they've tried to put more turns in it, there's just no friction on this type of spring snow. Best finish for Mouzaton this season. He was 15th in the first downhill at Kitzbühel. Look at him, he's standing up going 119. It's crazy. This carries so much speed, you can't see how steep it is. Whoa, look out! Okay, wow, nice recovery. Well, he saved that and will cross the line. But Mouzaton missed the gate. Somehow he held it together. Well, that fish nice is nasty. Ask Atlee Scardell or Rob Boyd, the Canadian who fell there. If you get caught in the back seat at all, your legs just give out. It's such a compression there. You have to have your ski on edge before you get on the flat part right there, and he doesn't. And as one of my British commentators said, you can't drive from the back seat unless you're in a forklift. So anytime you get way back here, you just don't have the strength. And it's actually smart, because if you pull yourself up, that's when you tear your ACL. But he just does a little worm turn, pops back up, and that's not a great day. Here we go. Dominic Paris of Italy. Barely a year after an ACL injury training for Kitzbühel. And all of a sudden, Brian, he's coming back. A third in the first race in Kitzbühel, and he is on a roll right now, it seems like. Seems to have found his groove once again. It takes about a year. You know, six months you can start skiing again and training. Your knee starts to feel good. But it takes a full year to really get back to where you left off, and even more for some other people. 14 downhill wins in his career. Little bumpy coming through the seal bond. This is a big turn right here. That's pretty clean and nice, not too bad. Arms way out to the side, just trying to find some kind of balance down here at this high speed. Running real close to the leader, Bayat Foyts, and he's a big man, can carry some speed. Okay, 1200s. Let me stand up here, get in the right position. Yes, excellent, good and forward in his tuck early. Dominic Paris at Garmisch into the lead by a lot. 37 one hundreds all the way back for Dominic Paris. Well, the Dominator is back. Really solid turn in that last fish Niza. There he is in the upper section, really drifting wide but carrying such high speed. He doesn't really worry about the line. That's what you have to do in downhill sometimes. Just worry about your aerodynamics even though you're far off line. Just sometimes it says you're going a little bit faster than everybody else. Truckee, California's Travis Ganong was never better than he was four years ago. At the Garmisch Downhill, the American Speedster scored the biggest win of his career in 2017 in this classic race. His last trip to the podium on World Cup, Ganong was a silver medalist at the 2015 World Championships in the downhill at Beaver Creek. And now, Travis Ganong is out of the gate and back at Garmisch Partenkirchen. Yeah, it was tough for Travis. Whoa, whoa, goodness. That was so close. You're gonna chip your tooth on your knee if you do it like that. A little bit of a hole starting up there at the bottom of the Trogolang. But he was really on a roll in 2017 and then in January 2018 tore his ACL, missed the Olympics. Actually rehabbed with his girlfriend, Marie-Michelle Gagnon, who tore her ACL about two months before that, so they rehab together. And can we talk about Mitch here last week, finishing third in that Super G? Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, and she was 12th the next day in a, another Super G race, and she's on her way to the World Championships, and watch out. Yep, skiing with some confidence, and 
Travis is skiing with a lot more confidence as well, so feeding off each other's energy and each other's successes. Pretty good through that turn. The coaches are happy with Travis's confidence and upward trend, it seems like. He's always really fast down here at the bottom, so it's, you know, he's a little too far back right now, but let's see if he picks up some time down in this last turn. Well, whatever the finish is for Travis Skinon today, he pulled one out of the fire because it was near disaster up top. Skinong is fourth right now, 110 back. That could have been a lot worse. Yeah, here he is off the Trogolang. He pick up speed so quickly, gets in his tuck, and hits a roll. Man, seen a few people end up in the net over to the right there in that last lift that takes you up to the start. The bottom of it, you almost go through that net, it seems like sometimes you're carrying so much speed. But close one, and that's a, not a great place to make a mistake because there's a ton of flats after that. It's a great story. Johan Clary in his 40s was second at Kitzbühel, and he just keeps on going. A miraculous performance in Kitzbühel. Incredible. Oldest Alpine skier to fish in the top three, and he did it in the hardest course to boot. Yeah, my friend this week, Patrick Yarbin, held that record at the age of 39, where he was third in the Super G. But Claret seems to be getting better with age, like a fine wine, like a Beaujolais in France. And he's having a good season. Fifth at Val d'Isere. He was fourth in the first downhill at Kitzbühel, and then cracked it to second the next day. Well, he won a silver here at the Worlds in 2019, so he does like Garmisch, that's for sure. He says he's in the best shape of his yeah, life yeah, at 40 years old. Who does he think he is, Tom Brady? <laughs> well, a little off the pace now, and that's not going to do it for Claret, but watch him at the World Championships. This guy is skiing with a lot of confidence right now for France. Silver medalist in the Super G at the 2019 Worlds, Johan Claret of France, back in fifth right now. Well, he had the record for the oldest skier to ski in a downhill in a World Cup race to be on the podium, and he beat his record three times. So if he keeps doing that, he can keep himself in the record books. Max Friends of Austria. Getting ready to go, visualizing. It's been a long time between wins for the Austrian star. But the 2017 World Championship bronze medalist won the training run at Garmisch. Can Franz turn practice into a podium finish? We'll find out next on CBC. Welcome back to Road to the Olympic Games, just chilling, presented by Toyota. Let's welcome you back inside our CBC Sports Studios. Be great in Tokyo. Thomas Dressen of Germany won this race last year, just coming back from injury. He was a forerunner today, and now he's a fan of the race. Italy's alpine giant Christoph Innerhofer capped his best speed season by winning the downhill at Garmisch in 2013. He also won at Beaver Creek and Vangen that season. By the way, Innerhofer has an affinity for this place. In 2011 at the World Championships here, he won three medals, including gold in the Super G, silver in the combined, bronze in the downhill. Here he goes, the veteran, Christoph Innerhofer of Italy. And I heard from Thomas Dressen that he said he's had no pain in his hip, but 
He doesn't want to compete in this race because he'll lose his spot in the World Championships in the top seven for a good start number. So he didn't compete today, just four ran, and he said he's feeling good. So another skier on a comeback trail, just like Christoph Innerhofer. Dressen had hip surgery. They're feeling a little better for the Germans. Germans are really coming on strong. Andreas Sander, Romet Baumann, they're looking good. As are the Italians with Paris in the lead right now. And you know, you talk about uh, big game players. Innerhofer always gears up for the World Championships. He's been on the podium at several World Championships. So he's looking forward to Cortina. It only lives an hour away from Cortina. And he's a big time player, as you said, gold, silver, bronze, and here before. But he had COVID in January, and he said he has 30% less lung capacity. So he said the lactic acid at the bottom of the course really builds up for him. So this shorter course here in Garmisch today, now the sun's coming out, that'll help him too. But the shorter course will help him have a little more strength in those legs. But normally, he skis 20% with his head, 80% with his body, but it's about 50-50 now. Interhofer, forward. That's Look. outstanding, really. Dominic Paris, his teammate, hangs on to the lead. Yeah, considering this guy, his body really couldn't hold up, tore his ACL in 2019, fractured his leg two years before that, now he's had all these COVID problems. But to come back after hardly skiing at all last year, barely racing, he did some training runs, same thing as Tomas Dressen. But he's right in there as well for an older guy in the circuit. Gotta be happy for him. Here we go with Vincent Krickmeyer of Austria coming off a Super G win at Pittsburgh. It's just really excelling so well in Super G. Leads the standings by 81 points over Matthias Meyer. He lost his Super G Globe by three points last year, so I really think he's focusing in on that Super G. Won the last training run in Kitzbühel in the downhill and wasn't happy with that and then didn't perform very well. It was only ninth and 17th, I think. That seems to shine in Super G. So we'll watch him in these big sweeping turns down here through the ice hang. Great body position, maybe drifting a little low. He's hunting down Dominic Paris today who has the lead and he was second to Dominic Paris at the last World Championships in Aura in the Super G. Pretty good turn there, only four tenths behind. Remember Paris, point three seven in front. Oh, now losing a little bit of time and getting out of his tuck there. Bad body position. And drifting too wide. Oh, no. He's just blown it. That's it. Watch this a second back. Oh, even more. 123 in arrears. Vincent Kriegmeier got way wide. Got back in the tunnel near the end of the track. He was in the rears, that's for sure. <laughs> Little bump there and gets squatted down in a bad position, has to pitch his ski sideways just to make that red gate. Lucky to be on his feet and across the line. That was close. There it is again from, look at that, gets his rear end right down towards his binding, staring straight at that net, going, oh no, honey, hang on. And he did. Max Franz, the training run leader of Austria. Right now it stands Dominic Paris, Bayat Voits, and third is France's teammate, Matthias Meyer. Okay, so let's see what Max Franz can do here after winning that only training run that they had, as you said. 134.98, so he's gotta go a little bit faster, which he probably should, got the race skis, race board, race suit, race helmet, race gloves, everything racy on. 
He just seems to have found some speed. Found some speed in Kitzbühel as well. He and his coach and his cousin, Werner Franz, were at their home in Weisbrock training last week. So trying to dial it all in together. Big air off the seal bond sprung. He's going quickly. Okay, .39. This is good for Franz. Hasn't been on the podium yet this season, but been racing a lot. Max Franz of Austria. Oh, .61. Okay, Fischneiser. Pretty good, pretty smooth. Okay, when your name is Franz, you should be a heck of a downhiller. Franz at the line, fourth, very, very close. So, and he just wants to snap his pole, lo pole over his shoulders. Knows how close he was. Big flight off the seal bond sprung. Had the fastest speed down at the bottom yesterday, 119. So he was quick and oh, he was almost there. I love that yellow helmet that he wears. That's the one that Herman Meyer, the Hermanator, uh, made very famous. Carlo Yonka in the gates. Another veteran racer. And you know, you talk about past champions, Brian, people who've had experience in classic races. This guy won way back in 2010. Yeah, it's amazing that he won here so long ago and has seemed to have found more speed as of late, too. He had heart problems there. He actually had to leave the World Championships here, go have, go have his heart operated on, and then two weeks later, won in Kranz Gagora. So, incredible comeback for Carlos Yanka, and he seems to just be on the comeback trail ever since. He's got a bad back, so he only skis with painkillers now. Only does 50% of training normally. So it's not just his heart that's giving him problems. It seems to be everything else. And the ice man just has his whole body on ice, it seems like. Well, he's done a lot in his career. He's been the Olympic champion, overall World Cup champion. But that was a few years ago. He just keeps on rolling. Yeah, pretty good. Just under six tenths off. This has always had such a nice touch on his skis. But all of these bumps, I can just feel him bracing with his back instead of trying to relax and let things go. Just doesn't want to tweak it. Look at that Zook Spitz in the background. Gorgeous. And gentle turn through there. I can just feel him. So he's a second back <laughs> in sixth spot, but you know what? He's top 10 in every downhill race out, Carlo Yunka. He can hardly bend over at the waist and reach for that finish line in that last turn. I just feel his back just almost giving out on him every time, but this guy doesn't want to seem to give up, that's for sure. Well, he's been great in the GS, the downhill, the Super G, the combined, the great veteran, Carlos Yunka. Well, in a classic race like this, there's speed and there's risk involved. The Kandahar at Garmisch means a fast flirtation with danger. Stay with us. Back in Garmisch Partenkirchen, and this was the scene almost a decade ago of one of the biggest victories in Canadian alpine skiing history. Eric Gay of Mont-Tremblant, Quebec, was 29 years old at the time. At the World Championships in Garmisch, he stormed down the track to win the downhill title. And Eric Gay became the second consecutive Canadian to win the downhill World Championship. John Kuchera won at Val d'Isère, France in 2009. And the next World Championships are a goal from Cortina, Italy, the host of the 2026 Olympic Winter Games. Next weekend, we'll have the women's downhill Saturday on road to the Olympic Games. Follow up with the men's downhill on Sunday as we go to skiing's summit in the Dolomites. The defending champion will be Shetel Jansrud of Norway. In Aura, Sweden in 2019, this attacking Viking won his lone World Championship title in the downhill. 
He's also been the Olympic Super G champion and won eight downhills over the course of his World Cup career. Oh yes, the attacking Viking, Shettel Jansrud, into the gate at Garmisch. Yeah, he's just had an outstanding career. Things have changed a little bit for him since he's become a father. He says he doesn't feel like he can risk everything because it's not just himself he's risking, risking things for, it's for his entire family. And then watching all of his teammates go down this year, all the falls they've had, Alexander Amat Kilde out with an ACL injury, the two young kids, like it's just been extremely difficult for him and I think he's thinking, am I next? Uh, you know, he sees it happening to all these guys who he's training with, and now he's out there alone, and it just really is difficult when you're out there alone. You feel all that pressure of entire nation on your shoulders, and, you know, it's kind of like Eric Gay. Remember, Eric Gay and Lake Louise essentially retired in the starting gate because he saw all of his teammates getting injured. He just didn't have it anymore, and I kind of feel it's the same way for Jansru. Yeah, and those young guns for Norway that you were referring to, Atlee Lee McGrath, Lucas Broughton, High hopes for those guys, and now he's a bit of a lone wolf. He's still hanging in there, only eight tenths out. Didn't really find his form in Kitzbühel. And now even losing a little bit more time, and it's becoming really dark down here. It's notorious for the flat light and how dark it is later in the day, these later start numbers become more and more difficult. Easier to start number one than it is number 15. Well, he'll be off the podium today and set his sights on the world championships and maybe defending that title that he won in Aura. Well, the good news is Cortina is usually in the bright sunlight, so that will help him. But you have so much more trepidation when the light gets flat and you're not 100% confidence and you don't have that invincibility that you had when you were winning all your medals back in the day. Two years ago must seem like a lifetime ago for him. That's a tough struggle now. One of the bright lights on the World Cup circuit, a youngster, 23-year-old Marco Odermatt of Switzerland, six-time World Junior Champion. Six time, that's crazy. 23-year-old prodigy from Switzerland. They have really high hopes for him, that's for sure. His dad actually kept stats of how many days he skied it as a kid and every year. And between the ages of 16 and 18, he skied 136 days a year. Now he's up to over 1,800 times on the snow. That's almost five years of skiing for this young prodigy. Five podium finishes this season, including a win in a GS at Santa Catarina. And he's uh, a part of the conversation in the race for the overall Crystal Globe. Just really nice technique. Hasn't really refined the skills in downhill that you need. Doesn't have that big weight like Dominic Paris or Bayat Foyts. What a gorgeous touch in GS. Oh, and taking a straight line through the Fischneiser. How's that for some courage? Talk about those six World Junior Championships. He won five of them at one edition in Davos in 2018. He's back a bit today. Yeah, that's pretty good. Started for number 20, down to eight. And as I said, it becomes more and more difficult, especially in these soft conditions. You can see the ruts building up there, all the grooves in the track. Getting bounced around a little bit, but this guy's got some style. I love it. Well, you're gonna hear him loud and clear over the next couple of years, Marco Odermatt. Coming up at 4.30 Eastern, the Bobsleigh World Championships on track at Altenburg, Germany. Two-time Olympic champion, Kaylee Humphreys in the driver's seat for the United States. Mark Lee and Helen Upperton have the call of that one. Right. 
Daniel Hemmetsberger is a 29-year-old customs officer from Austria. One of the guys vying for the four spots in the downhill that you get at the World Championships. The opening ceremonies are tomorrow. Downhill's next Sunday as we promoted for the men. So six Austrian guys will train. Hemmetsberger should be in there. and be battling Hannes Reichelt out for that last spot for the top four. So they'll train and then have the four fastest on race day go. Meyer, Franz, Kriegmeier, Reichel, Hemmetsberger. Boy, they got a lot of speed racers. He's with really good technique as well. And you can see in these turns, he just keeps his hip nice and high and locked in a position, especially down here in this turn. Before it gets flat, you have to have your skis on edge right here and then keep that hip locked in that nice high tall position like remember when you're at camp at camp kilku and you're in the tug of war and you're pulling on the tug of war and you have your legs as straight as you can your hip locked in nice and high because if you get in a squatted position you don't have as much strength and you're not going to beat the other team so like my friend Chaz burkett when he went there just standing nice and high in that locked position with your hip that's what you have to do in every single turn especially in that fish knives as well Big shout out to Chaz, and you know what, Brian? I never lost the tug of war at Kilku Camp, not once in my career. Hemmetsberger back in nine. Yeah, he's happy with that. His coaches will now be scratching their heads of who to choose, but they want everybody to be fast, and you want to have numbers from one to 30. Spread yourself out, and Hemmetsberger will be starting a little bit later than the top guys, and it's bounced around a little bit, but that hip and that nice high position is perfect for him. Big race on home snow for Josef Furstel of Germany. Well, watch out for him. Pepe was fast in training, second fastest. Missed a gate, but not by much. Just missed a gate down at the bottom. But the dad of two kids can really fly here at home. And his dad, Sepp Furstel, won the Hanenkam downhill at Kitzbühel back in 78 and 79. Yeah, and then Joseph won the Super G in Kitzbühel in 2019, so they both have gondolas there. His first race here was back in 2007, if you can believe it. He was 53rd. And his best has been ninth, so it takes a while to get to the top, but he's been here a long time, knows this track really well. And nothing better than doing it at home. Oh, no! Wow. Long flight and into the net. Holy mackerel, that was unreal. Wow, I just have visions of Eric Gay there a few years ago when he did a similar sort of thing. Didn't land in the net, probably flew further than Fairstill, but my goodness, Pepe Fairstill went really far, really wide coming into the Seelbahnsprung. Outside the blue die, he's got a fight to make that red gate, and then see his tracks are going a little bit further to the right, hooks the edge. And man, oh man, launches backwards. Woohoo! Here we go. Look out. That is insane. Just completely helpless right there as he flies through the air. The good news is he lands on the steep part. Oh man, and the better news is he's standing up. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that looked like it could have been a lot worse for Josef Firstel. There's Beat Foyts down at the bottom of the hill watching some of the other racers. Wow, I hope his kids aren't watching right now because Daddy just went for a big spill right there. That was nuts. Well, a scary moment on the Kandahar. We'll be back with more from Garmisch right after this.
can help rank the most iconic moments in Canadian ski history. Not sure what your favorite is? Well, we've got you covered, so check out all 100 moments before you cast your vote for your most amazing memory. You can also find yourself a winner of an exclusive prize pack from Alpine Canada. It's a celebration of 100 years of Canada on the slopes. Head over to alpinecanada.org slash ACA100 to explore, view, vote, and participate. Oh yeah, Josef Perstel of Germany after a high-speed crash is up out of the nets. He'll ski down. There's a sigh of relief from Alpine fans and the entire German team. So Perstel looks like he might be okay. Time tested, Hannes Reichelt stakes his claim as one of the all-time great Austrian speed racers. In 2017, Reichelt won for the second time on the Kandahar, his last of six downhill victories. At the time, he was 36 years of age. Only Swiss star Didier Kusch, who won here as a 37-year-old, can top that. And Reichelt continues to battle on. He's 40 now. Come on, come on, come on. He turns 41 July 5th. So if he gets on the podium, he'll beat his 40-year-old competitor. Johan Kalari is the oldest guy to be on the podium, and he almost fell right there. Way down on his side, bounces back up. Yeah, he just hasn't really been feeling great lately. Talk of retirement at the end of the year for Hannes Reichelt, and that's always tough to do before an Olympic year. He's trying to just make it into those world championships and see if he can pull off a miracle. And that's the one place where he's had the misfortune not to excel is at the Olympic Games. He's, he's missed Olympic Games with injury and just hasn't been able to do it there. No, no, that's it. Yeah. You can see him wave his right hand right there. He's just looking for a place to ski off course, I think. Sometimes when you almost fall in the upper part of the course, your mind just wanders off into bad places in your brain where you don't want to be. And yeah, just almost skips off his hip right there and bounces back up. Probably knew he wasn't going to be fast, and then when he came into the ice hang here. He said, you know what, fellas? Yeah, that's enough. I don't need to risk it any further. I'm almost 41, and my day is done, and maybe my career as well. One of very few racers to win this classic downhill at Garmisch twice. Hannes Reiko of Austria. Another Italian, another veteran, 35-year-old, Matteo Marsalia. Well, the radios and the walkie-talkies going off from coaches all the way up and down the course, the jury members as well. They're letting everybody know it's getting pretty dark through the ice saying It's okay up here in the Himmelreich. Fairly bright, fairly gentle terrain. But when it gets down towards the bottom, the sun just peeks in behind that Zugspitz and it is really bumpy. And you just can't see whatsoever. 2013 was his best season. He had a Super G win at Beaver Creek. He's got a sister, Francesca Marsalia, World Cup racer. being super cautious through this whole section. A little bit of a skid there through the turn. A little bit of sunlight there, but it's even more difficult going from brilliant sunshine into super darkness. Eyes take a little while to adjust, and when you're traveling at such high speeds, that makes it so difficult. It looks like it's smooth in front of you when it's dark, but I can tell you from your feet underneath you that it's not whatsoever. Marcelia, well back, 21st place, the veteran. A reminder, the young Canadians and a flight of them are still to come. Let him 
Bryce Roger of France, 30 year old. Well, the Canadians always love coming here. We used to work out at the U.S. Army base. They have the largest U.S. Army base outside of North America, so a really great setup if you can get into their facilities, their gym, and actually do your laundry in a real laundromat instead of doing it in your bathtub. That was the best thing about going to Garmisch. And they had a McDonald's there, which was it seemed to be a treat because you just wanted some taste of home, and that was the only thing that we usually got. So the Canadians liking it a little bit more here now, now that they've spent a few years upgrading. Roger being a little bit passive through this section as well. Oh, no! Watch out! Watch out! Oh, man. All tangled up in the net. Bryce Roger. Wow, that, that's what I said about having to lock your hip in that high position. Because when you get your rear end down towards your tails, bad things happen. And when the light's flat, you just don't really see that transition. You think you're going to be OK. You think your legs have enough strength in them. And Roger just loses an edge right there, and then tries to hang on for dear life with all his might to pull himself back up. Wow, that is just a helpless feeling. He's at the mercy of the speed that he's carrying in the net. Tries to dig his skis in there to slow down, but doesn't help that much. Usually you want to keep your skis up in the air, actually, so you don't tear a knee or something, but he went in heavily towards those nets. Thankfully, they stopped him. Look how close the trees are right there. Yeah, and they'll try to cut him out of the nets now. And, uh, boy, he got really... In all, Canadians have had eight podium finishes in this downhill. Four of them belong to Eric Gay, who was so successful here. Eric also won the Super G at garmisch partenkirchen in 2010. Great history for Canada at Garmisch. Right, Brian? Here's Jeffrey Reed. Yes, it's going to be more difficult for these young guys to be able to do it today. Later, bibs getting really rough now. Temperatures are so warm that it's tough to do it from the back of the pack when it gets bumpy. But Jeff Reed's been skiing a little bit better as of late. I was speaking with his dad earlier and talked about the sibling rivalry between he and his brother Eric, who skis on the slalom team. And he said, hey, there's always rivalry between siblings, but not between these guys now because Jeff skis downhill, Eric skis slalom, and GS, and it'll be interesting to see how they compete at the World Championships when they get back together. They also trained a lot in the summer at the home gym at their parents' place in Alberta. Set up some weights there and got it done in the summer, and 31st for Jeff, just out of the points. But skiing a lot better in Super G, so looking for a better result in the Super G, which will happen after this. Son of a crazy Canuck, what did we call him earlier in the year? One of the Kinder Canucks, Jeff Reed. Brody Seeger, and this is good news to see him back on track. He had that December crash in the downhill at Val d'Isere and a shoulder injury. Yeah, really bad fall in Val d'Isere, right at the finish line. And that's what Coach John Cachera said. You just have to try and manage these guys, get them through the tough races, build up their experience and their confidence, and Give them an opportunity when the chance is there, and the chance isn't right here today, so they just have to be smart. But when Brody came through the finish in Kitzbühel when he had that good result last week in the Super G, he said he's back, and he definitely is one of the bright, shining lights on this young Canadian team. Zetsky bounced around there as well. Got a stand up tall here. He's such a good athlete and a good skier. He seemed to have a better chance in Super G, these young Canadians. Tough to do it in the downhill, just out of the points for another Canuck. Brody Seeger of the Whistler Mountain Ski Club, North Van. I so said that shoulder is feeling fine now. Look at that ski. You just can't see those bumps, and you can't carve that ski in perfect form sometimes when it's so dark down here on the Kandahar. 
Well, it takes a lot of time for these young skiers to learn these classic courses. And so better days are ahead uh, for Brody Seeger. Here's a guy who's raced these tracks for quite some time, 33-year-old Ben Thompson. Skiing on his own, Whoa. oh man! Wow. Almost made the same mistake as Brees Roger, but managed to pull himself right back up. And oh goodness, Benny, that was close. That's too bad. He wasn't too far out at the end of only 0.8 off coming into the ice hang. And now he's way back there. And he's had a tough go, really tough being on his own this season, has to pay his own way. A lot of these athletes have to pay a team fee, up to $45,000 they have to pay just to be on the team. That's crazy. But Ben even having to pay more to do it all on his own. And oh, he takes a breath there because he knows he dodged a bullet. Whoa, right there. Just has enough strength to get back up. Remember, he's had so much pain in that patella tendon in his knee. That was got to be tough for him. Jack Crawford of Toronto, and what a great go he had in the Super G at Kitzbühel. He was sixth. An incredible performance by Jack. Skied so nicely there, and that's a good turn coming into the ice on. Over the seal bond, got to stay forward, and then Get on your edge, quick switch right there. He's made a little bit of similar mistake. That's okay. These guys just have been feeding off each other and their great results in the Super Gene Kids deal. Remember Cam Alexander and Brody got hurt in that first race in Val d'Isere? Seemed to deflate the team a whole bunch, but now that Brody's back and some of these younger guys are really sticking it in there, they're feeding off that energy that the crazy Canucks used to have when the rivalry between Ken Reed and Steve Podgorski used to be like really evident, and they just love to compete against each other and beat each other, and that's what these guys are trying to do as well. He was also in the points in the Super G at Val Gardena, so Maybe there's something cooking for Jack Crawford and the rest of the young Canadians in the Super G once we get to the World Championships in Cortina next week. Broderick Thompson, the last of our Canadian skiers down today, the 26-year-old from Whistler, BC, and we know all about Broad. He's coming back from injury, and his sister is the great ski cross racer, Marielle Thompson. They really had a devastating knee injury, almost career ending it seemed like, but it's come back really nicely. Seems to be building up his confidence. Skied a lot better in Kitzbühel than I had seen him ski in the previous weeks. After he's got those elbows tucked right in. Perfect aerodynamics for Broderick. Nice that we get to see him a little bit higher up on the course through the Himmelreich. So he can really, he'll be happy with that as well. He can really break down the film after and see what he's doing well and not so well. And what he did well there was stay in that nice bullet tuck over the jump. I had a chance to talk to him not so long ago and uh, he recalls fine, with great fondness the sibling rivalry that he had going on with Big Air Mare and uh, just a great ski family. Okay, got to ski smart through here. 1.75, maybe just sneak into the top 30 and gain some valuable World Cup points, improve that start number. That's what these young guys have to do. Try and get some points so they can start in the top 30 because when you're starting way back in the back of the pack, it makes it more and more difficult. All the way down with Broderick Thompson, bib number 54 for Canada. Oh, and he is closest to the top 30 today for the Kinder Canucks. Oh, and he knows he just missed out. Even on one point, he'd be happy with. But a few tents back out of that spot. But it was tough last week in Kitzbühel when they had to cancel the race on Friday, miss the race on Saturday, go again on Sunday. It's been a tough week for all of them. So the Italian great Dominic Paris back on top. Paris scores his first win of the season and his first victory in this classic. Both Beat Voigts and Matthias Meyer, second and third respectively, have been racing red hot lately. Brian Dominic Paris becoming a dominant downhill force and is back after a major injury. 
just over a year ago. Yes, the Dominator is back, indeed. And when this guy gets going, there is just no stopping him whatsoever. Perfect run today, beat the field by a lot on the shortened course. I thought the times would be closer, but he destroyed them. Look at this, Dominic Paris now has 15 downhill wins on World Cup. He's in the prime of his career, tied with greats Herman Meyer and Franz Heinzer, fourth all time. Franz Klammer of Austria leads with 25. Here is today's champion. It takes a lot to be back on, on, uh, on the podium and then back uh, to doing a victory. I mean, that's uh, two pairs of skis, uh, two pairs of shoes. So, yeah, uh, but uh, the training yesterday gives me a lot of uh, confidence because I was skiing very solid and today I was pushing very hard to the bottom. And yeah, I mean, uh, I'm very happy. Downhill standings with two to go in Kvit Bell and Lenzerhut. If Beat Voigt leads with 48 points over Matthias Meyer, Dominic Paris back in the hunt for the Crystal Globe. The overall race has Alexi Pantero of France way ahead. Crashes today in some updates. Josef Furstel has a fractured ankle. He's done for the season. Bryce Roger, a torn ACL. His season is also Third over. Place from Austria. Dritter Platz aus Österreich, Kärnten, Matthias Mottl-Meyer. Hey, Matthias Meyer has now been on the podium, Brian, in five consecutive speed races. And Beat Voigt is so good. Mottl can't find the leader bit, chase, have the leader bit Second from him. He's place, still chasing Voigt. Representing Switzerland. Zweiter Platz aus der Schweiz, Beat Voigt. Well, the ball of lightning looks dialed in as he approaches the worlds in Cortina. He has won the downhill title and for the past three seasons and race. seems to be on his way First to another one, place. the fourth in a row. Representing Italy, Dominic Paris! Dominic Paris really proving he's back in the fast lane after a whole ton of adversity. Well, he won three medals here at the World Juniors way back in 2009 and put his life together just after that. Too much drinking and partying and he'll just be celebrating with his family tonight and on to the World Championships in his home country in Italy where they'd love to see him stand on top of the podium in that World Championship medal in the downhill next Sunday. Look at him, he's not even standing on the podium yet and he's bigger than Meyer and Voigt. <laughs> wow, big win.